Hey, it's Rainhead back with another deck tech, and this time I've got a preset for you. So, one request that I've had a lot is, well, could you make a budget control deck? Because most people that are trying to play the game on a budget uh, end up playing these rush, rushy, aggressive decks that get kind of boring to play, and I definitely understand that. So, I went ahead and tried to put together a competitive control list. Uh, so, yeah, decided to go with Priest. And one of the reasons that you don't see a lot of cheap control decks is because in a deck that's trying to prolong the game and get it to the later stages, you want cards like Ragnaros, Elkstraza, Ysera, stuff that really, like, closes the game out once you've, once you've dragged it out already. And uh, it's usually tough to build a control deck without those. But the exception is with Priest, uh, you have this class card, my Control, which is just a really swingy effect in the late game that can kind of make up for a lack of Ragnaros and all of that. So, uh, anyway, uh, with that out of the way, I'm going to get to the cards and why I'm playing them. So, I start off with Circle of Healing. It's a really flexible, powerful effect for very little mana. Uh, I can set up pretty good North Shark Lair turns. It has synergy with Injured Blade Master. Uh, you know, making a 4 7 turn 3 is very, very powerful. It's kind of like innervating a Yeti, for example. Uh, you can also set up some really, really impressive Soul Priest turns where you clear the entire board. And uh, of course, it's just got, even when you don't have those cards to combo with it, it's just a really powerful effect. A lot of times you can kill something with a Yeti, play another creature, and then heal up your Yeti for zero mana. You know, because sometimes you don't have the mana available to use your hero power to do that. So, uh, yeah. Uh, next is Holy Smite, just a really flexible, cheap removal spell, exactly what you want in this kind of deck. Power Word Shield is a card with very little opportunity cost. Uh, you're basically losing nothing by playing it. It's a one-mana card that replaces itself with another card, so that in and of itself would <laughs> make it into most decks if it were neutral. But uh, buffing a creature for two health is very, very relevant. It lets you kill the creature without having to trade yours off. Uh, it, the buff is permanent, so you can continue to kill stuff, heal your creature up every turn. Just a really powerful card. North Shark Cleric is a primary draw engine of the deck, so you can set up a lot of turns where you're drawing like three or four cards at once, and that's really how you pull ahead in the mid game. Um, depending on the matchup and the board state, you're not always going to want to just run this out there. Sometimes it's correct to hold on to it until you can play it and draw a card immediately, so that even if they kill it, you got your value. Uh, Ancient Watcher, Sun Fury, and Defender are where a lot of the dust. Uh, in, in crafting this deck will come from, but uh, I think that most people should own Defender. He's basically the best neutral in the game. Sun Fury is a slightly weaker version that's played in more most control decks, so definitely recommend owning that card. And Ancient Watcher synergizes with both of them, so if you plan on playing stuff like Druid in the future, it's a good card to own. Uh, but yeah, I definitely opt for that package. It's really powerful, really cheap, and it's just extremely effective against the aggro. So Shadow Word Death uh, is the Shadow Word of choice in this deck. I don't play any of the 2-mana one that destroys small creatures because the smaller creatures in the game tend to, pri tend to provide value even if they're killed, like uh, Harvest Golem, for example, or like a Nat Peggle that's already drawn a card. There's some exceptions like Scarlet Crusader that you can kill with this, but generally Shadow Word Death is going to kill the cards that give you a problem, like, you know, like Ancient Allures, Ragnaros. Just, you know, once, you, once you're in the later stages of the game, you need to be able to kill their Haymakers. So Shadow Word Death is the card of choice. Uh, I don't play Crazed Alchemist because it's bad. Thought Steel uh, is like a just a pretty solid, consistent source of card advantage for the deck. It's like a Arcane Intellect for Priest, you know, three mana, draw two cards. Uh, the the cards that you get tend to be pretty solid against, like, like for example, all the Druid cards are actually pretty good against Druid. So it's kind of funny, but uh, it tends to be pretty effective against whatever class you're playing against. So uh, I definitely recommend playing that if you're trying to play a slower game. You need a way to pull out ahead on cards. Okay, and actually get to Injured Blade Master, just a really efficient creature. Like I said, it synergizes with Circle of Healing, even when you don't have that, it's just so good with your hero power that it should definitely be in the most priest lists. It's just a very powerful card. And you need something that costs three that you can actually put on the table. Okay. And then we have uh, Soul Priest and Chillwind Yeti, which are our two Yetis for the deck. Uh, I've tried uh, Tazingo, I've tried a few different things, but these are the two that I'm going with right now. Soul Priest has combos a Circle of Healing. You can play it on turn six and kill something off immediately. It's just really flexible and powerful. A lot of times in the later stages of the game, your normal hero power that heals stuff will actually be better than dealing damage, um, but that's not always the case, and it's nice to have a card like this to you know, give you a little bit of a variety throughout the game. Chillwind Yeti is just a nice proactive 4 drop, very very good with your hero power, because a lot of times with Druid, when you play a Yeti, you can kill two things, but then they just kill your creature with like a hero power or something. But uh, with Priest, you can kill something, heal it up, kill something again, heal it up. It's, just, it's so easy to snowball with your hero power, because Yeti's always going to have its health topped off, and it's going to be very, very difficult for them to remove without using a card like Hex or Polymorph. And then Defender of Argus, already went over that, part of the Ancient Watcher package. And it's good when you don't have it, too. Sometimes you can just buff, like, Injured Blade Master, Yetis or something, and, you know, improve the power of your creatures, help them trade up. 
Uh, Holy Nova is the only card that costs 5 in the deck. It's very, very powerful against aggro. It has a lot of amazing turns that you can set up with uh, Northshire Cleric. So I definitely recommend playing this in most lists. Uh, Temple Enforcer is my 6 drop of choice. Uh, at first I was playing Boulder Fist over just to try that out. And um, he wasn't bad, but he wasn't providing quite enough value if they Tink Mastered it or Polymorphed or Hexed it. Temple Enforcer does provide value at the cost of one health you're getting that battle cry which i think more than makes up for it just seems like a more powerful card in my opinion and after having played with it i'm pretty impressed so yeah permanent buff just like power word shield uh definitely helps your creatures trade up throughout the course of a game and provides value even if it gets killed so definitely recommend that six drop and then we're we have the two mind controls to top off most lists in legend that you see like most legendary players that play priest uh they usually only play like one mind control but you have to keep in mind that those decks are also playing ysera ragnaros like they have other late game cards besides mind control we don't exactly have that luxury unless we're trying to play cards like war golem which are just too low power level in my opinion so two mind control uh is definitely passable uh i've played with I played with the two. Uh, sometimes you draw them early, and that sucks, but that's the case with any card that costs more than six mana. Uh, but they're very powerful when you do get into those later, later game, you know, longer games, and uh, very strong against classes like Druid and Shaman. So yeah, definitely recommend playing two of those. Uh, I played this list on ladder a little bit before this. I think it's pretty fun. I think it's pretty effective, and it was winning a good amount for me, like over 60%. So. I recommend you try it out if you're interested in kind of a different flavor of budget deck, if that's, you know, the sort of thing that interests you. And I'll see you guys next time with the next deck deck.